All right, what's shaking YouTube? Danny here, back again with another tutorial. It's been a while, <laughs> I know. Um, I can explain, that's a whole nother video altogether. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, so a while back a buddy of mine was asking for some help with production and mixing. And uh, one of his questions really rang a bell and it's something that I've heard several times before. Um, and that is, how do I get my kick and my bass to get along in the mix? How do I get them to sit well together? And the thing is, for most genres of music, your kick and your bass are going to be probably some of your key elements. So it's important to get those to work together well, otherwise your song can end up not so great. So the solution is actually pretty simple, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do just that. So first, let's start with the basics. Any song, you've got a range of frequencies, and your different instruments and parts, and drums and whatever, take up different frequencies. Now this is the way it's supposed to be, obviously, so you have a diverse range of sound. Sounds good. It's pleasing to our ears. All right, so that makes sense. However, some instruments, i.e. kick and bass, take up the same frequency range. So this can pose a problem. They cannot mesh well, the mix can get muddy, uh, you can lose headroom. Overall, not something we want. So we have to use tricks and techniques to get them to work together, right? So as I usually do, I have a project here that I'm working on that I can use to demonstrate this principle. Let's give that a listen real quick. So, nice full chorus, I mean, it's a work in progress, don't judge me too hard. Um, but, let me show you guys just the kick in the bass here. Alright, so... These are, relatively speaking, taking up the same frequency range, the lower, lower mids kind of bass, not so much the sub bass, but to some degree as well that is the case. So, how am I going to get these two to work along without ruining my mix? The answer is simple, side chaining. There are other ways to do it, um, but my preferred method is side chaining. And with side chaining, there's a lot of ways to do side chaining, but let me show you guys my favorite way and what I think has been the most effective in my uh, time producing. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is make a side chain bus, and this is going to basically be the workspace for our side chaining process. Basically, what side chaining is is dynamically compressing something based on the input from another sound. That might sound confusing, but it'll make sense as we go along. So, first of all, let's make our side chain bus. Name it whatever you want. I'm going to call it side chisel and give it a cool color, uh, like purple. Cool. All right. Next thing you're going to want to do is put in a limiter on the last input of your side chain track. This is going to be the compressor that we use to side chain. First thing I like to do when I put a limiter on and use it as a compressor is go ahead and turn the attack down so you don't have any latency issues and put your ceiling all the way up so that the limiter part of this plugin doesn't actually function at all. We're going to switch just to the compression side. Then what you're going to want to do is with your kick track selected, right click on this little arrow and choose side chain to this track. Now you don't want to hit side chain to this track only because then your kick's not going to go to your master bus or any of your sends. What side chain to this track does is it essentially only sends the information of the sound. It doesn't send the actual sound of the kick. So you're not going to double it. So go ahead and do that. Next, what you're going to want to do is go to the track that you want side-chained, i.e., in this case, the bass. Go ahead and take that and click on that same arrow, except choose route to this track only. Originally, you had your bass going directly to your master bus. Now you want it to go just through your side-chained bus and then to your master. 
So now that we've got our stuff routed correctly, go ahead and open up your limiter again. Now you see in the compression side of this plugin, we've got the little side chain option here. This is the key. So what we're gonna wanna do is right click and choose kick. Now it's easy to choose the wrong thing here and then you side chain is all weird because you're compressing based on a different track. Anyway, that's not important. Make sure that the input here is your kick. Now, how is this going to help us? Well, let me show you what I'm talking about. So we've got our kick, right? It's not going through our side chain track. It's not, you don't see the actual signal going through, but in our compression plugin, now if you bring that down, you can see that it's generating these envelopes based on the kick. And those are when the side chain is actually going to be applied. Make sense? Cool. I hope so. You guys better be paying attention here. All right. So now I'm going to throw in the bass as well. Now, you can see the bass is going through the track normally. However, just the information of the kick signal is going through, so we can use that to compress it. Go ahead and bring your threshold down, turn your ratio up, and you can see that every time the kick hits, it's compressing that bass track. And basically, like, here it's done. Like, this is all you need to do. The rest of it from now on is just fine tuning the details. If you want a deeper side chain, turn your ratio up, bring your threshold down, it's gonna have a deeper cut every time you hit a kick. If you want to have a longer release, do just that. Take your release time and affect that. It basically functions just like a normal compressor, except it's triggered only every time you hit the kick. And from here, you're golden. I mean, if you want to take other tracks and ride it through your side chain to clean the mix up a bit, you can do just that. Uh, for instance, I've got this square kind of thing going on here. It's a little frantic. Let's say I want to clean that up with some side chaining. No problem. Take it. All I have to do is route it through that track only just like I did with the bass, and it'll automatically be side chained with the kick. Check this out. Nice. And so this gives us that pumping effect, which is technically speaking an imperfection in the sound. But for a lot of genres of music, a lot of EDM, that's what we like to hear. And so you can do that with as many tracks as you want. You can make it as deep, as drastic, or as subtle as you want, all to achieve the kind of mix and balance you think would be best. I mean, I trust your guys' judgment on that. So I think that about covers it. Let's hear the whole thing. Now this is a drastic example, but that illustrates the principle perfectly, and I hope you guys learned something from this. Anyway, I think that about wraps it up. Thanks for listening, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Hey, one more thing. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. If you want to be on the lookout for more tutorials in the future, hit that subscribe button. If you have something you want me to teach or an idea for a future video, leave a comment below and let me know because I would love to hear what you guys think. Alright, I'm out of here.